for Danny Koppel, or Danny K as he is more popularly known, following a career in music was a post-school choice. While studying for a BA in Law and Political Science from Wits University, Danny Kay spent a large portion of his time writing songs and submitting them to record companies. The rest, as they say, is history, and today he is not only a successful musician, but has also taken his talent forward into helping others. I came from a family that really taught me about the importance of servicing not only your community but you know the community that surrounds surrounds you wherever you'd be in living in south africa you don't have to look far to find a cause to latch on to so and i've got the ability to really you know have a profile and a name to do something bring in other musicians raise money i thought well here's my here's my chance you know i i, I got it i got to use that currency in the right way and i'd done a lot of work for other ngos but creating shout really gave me uh, a legacy i felt and something that i could own and and care for very deeply and uh, 10 years later uh, shout's still around so that's great Cabello and I had been friends in the music business pretty much from when I began in, in 1999-2000. Cabello was part of the biggest quieto group in the country. He was already a huge star, and you know we had a we had a very genuine friendship for many years before Shout began, and we were peers and, and friends in the music business. And um, I think I saw a kindred spirit in him, someone that cared for the same things that I cared for, that had the same principles, the same drive, ambition, and Shout couldn't have been Shout without him. I started out in the music business in 1996, and around 99, I changed record labels, and uh, I remember meeting this, uh, this young, impressionable white boy who was really, really talented at what he did. Uh, and what, what, what drew me to Danny was actually his uh, talent in, 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 in songwriting and singing. And I guess through the music was when the bond began. Shout began after the murder of um, the musician Lucky Dube, who was a world-renowned figure. And when I, you know, I heard the news of his murder, uh, I guess it was just a tipping point with me. I thought, okay, what are we going to do? I turned to the most natural thing for me to do, which was music, creating a song, roping in the biggest influences on one singular anthemic track, which was a remake of the Tears for Fear song called Shout, uh, which many people know. And we formed this, we formed this NGO. The song did so well that soon afterwards we did our second one. And I think two years later, we did another one and we felt really strongly that it should be a South African song written by South Africans because this is a South African problem. And then we got Mikasa along with ourselves and a whole host of other musicians to come together to do another one. We didn't really know what we were going to achieve. I think we went into it very naively looking back, but we knew we would create a war cry. This would be a war cry to speak to South Africans, to try and just not only motivate them, but motivate us to get out there and do something. And sitting in you know, this building today, 10 years later, that came as a, that's come as a result of just that idea, shows you the power of ideas, I think. And that if you just start something, um, you truly you know, you have no idea where they may lead. So uh, I'm a real big believer in, in the power of an idea. Mother Teresa said, he said, if you want to feed a thousand people, start by feeding one, you know? And, and I know that, and I believe that because sometimes the task at hand can be so mammoth. It can look so big, you think, oh, geez, you know, is downloading the song for 20 Rand really, really going to make a difference? I'm saying to you, it does. The main focus of Shout uh, and the intention of Shout was to combat violence 
and crime and make South Africa a safer place. Hence our tagline, shout for a safer South Africa. Um, and when we had raised some money, we looked at you know what to do, what to do with it. How could we, as an organisation, effect some some change? And for many years, we would donate money to criminal rehabilitation. So we thought if we could rehabilitate offenders, we wouldn't have repeat offenders that would reduce crime. But the more we really looked into the root causes of crime, we realized that most criminals are performing these acts due to desperation, a lack of opportunity. Maybe as a kid, they never graduated high school, so they have no opportunity to employ themselves. They have no opportunity to raise uh, money for their families or themselves. So we dialed it back to the real early, early stages, which is kids and reading and writing and numeracy and giving kids an opportunity to change the trajectory of their lives from a very early age. So we went on this, um, this drive to build libraries across the country in schools that really needed them. And like the Carter School in Alexander that we're sitting in today, it's a school that really needed it. And you know, hundreds of kids and thousands of kids are going through our libraries every year. And we've built five of them and uh, we'll, we'll build many more. The children are very much excited with this library because initially what happened was whenever we give them a homework to do at home and they have to get to the library, some of them did not have an access to these libraries, communal libraries, because of transport issues. Others are living far away from the libraries and others do not want to walk to the library because they are saying they are so scared because the library is far away from them. But after the establishment of this library, I saw that these kids were very much, and even now when they eat, they just want to eat next to the library and they are making it dirty. But I said to myself, I cannot just chase them away because they are saying to me, we want to get in and start reading the books. And I think it has boosted our confidence as teachers to teach these kids because it is something that they have been yearning for, yet they did not have an access to. And I, I think they are very much excited just to have this kind of a facility nearby and also within the schoolyard where they can just come and have a wonderful time reading the books. I think working with Madiba and, and seeing, um, you know, seeing his the, the, the way he worked with people, his care and, and, and love for, you know, for South Africans made an impression on me. The same way my parents made an impression on me as a young kid to, to care for my fellow South African. Um, and that was their path, their, you know, their, their Derek Eretz that set me on that, on that path. And I think it's evident to the fact that Whatever I'm doing here, people are watching. Yeah. People are watching me the same way I watched my Diba, the same way I watched my parents. So, um, Kabela and I speak about this often. We like, you know, you must, you must always, you must, you must never stop because you know people are, are watching you. And if we stop, um, we show them that, you know, maybe failure is an option or stopping is an option. So we're very driven by that sense of, of responsibility by that sense of caring, that sense of community that you know, we've, put, we've put out there. So that is why you know, 10 years later we're still here. So the impact you have on people I think is, is, is massive and even more massive than you, than you realize. So yeah, you gotta go out there and, um, and do the best you can because you never know who's watching.